You know, one thing um, that I realized, especially at Howard, but so I'm, I'm 33 years old. I went to Morgan State University. And if someone comes up to me now and they say, uh, should I go to school or should I do something else? I'm against school. I'm against college specifically. Okay. Number one is overpriced. So all that money you're paying mm -hmm. to get an education for a piece of paper that the 90, it's a high chance that you might not get a job in the first place. When you mm -hmm. can take that time, it's not just the money, but it's also the time and energy that you're spending to get that degree when you could be focused on a career. There's so many resources online mm -hmm. where you can teach yourself, to be mm -hmm. honest. And uh, so like, are you, you know, when people um, come in contact with you, are you, Encouraging school. What what is your what's your overall outlook on the school system right now? I'm about fifty percent in alignment with your reasoning. I do believe college is overpriced. Right now in America, we have over two million American Africans with masters and doctorate degrees unemployed. From doctors to lawyers to engineers, it is amazing at the amount of talented black people, well certified, well credentialed, and they can't find work. So I do understand where you're coming from. And I do believe that our children, especially our men, need to redirect their attention back to the industrial building trades, which served as the foundation for the economic reality of black America for about 50 years. We gave up the industrial building trades for a life of collegiate education, and it has not proven a benefit to the community. Once upon a time, we didn't have to go to college at all. Our grandparents were auto mechanics. They were roofers. They were welders. Okay, they were laborers. They were barbers. They were uh, plumbers. We need to go back to that because when I look at FDMG and the money that we're paying to renovate the school, our election Electric bill was over a hundred thousand dollars. It took them two weeks. Our plumbing bill was nearly a hundred thousand dollars. It took them about two weeks. So you're earning a surgeon's salary. Excuse me. You're earning about a third of a surgeon's salary in two weeks. Mm. Who wouldn't want that type of an opportunity? So if I were in charge, every black boy and every black girl would get a certification before they go off to college. Now, I will not completely shut the door on college education. Why not? We still need a black professional class. I would rather have a black surgeon than a non-black surgeon. I would <laughs> rather have a black dentist than a non-black dentist. I would rather have a black engineer, school teacher, psychologist, social worker than a non-black one. So we still need our professional class, so college remains relevant, but I think black people need to start sending their children intentionally more to the HBCUs. I think that we are losing out by keeping our children away from the black college reality. And since our colleges are struggling with retention and with a revenue, if we made up our minds to marry the black college experience, I think it's a win-win situation. But I also think that the HBCU needs needs to keep current and competitive with the PWIs because a lot of black parents don't have a loyalty to the HBCU, unfortunately. So therefore, the HBCU needs to remain relevant. And I think every HBCU should have three institutions. One, a garden. As you know, most of our people live in food deserts. For a lot of black people, the closest real supermarket is about 15, 20 miles away. And a lot of our single mothers can't drive or don't have a car. So we need a community garden and make sure our people are eating healthy. Number two, every HBCU should have a credit union or a bank so that you can build Black Wall Street, so you can give our people loans and grants to build the hospitals, the banks, the supermarkets, the manufacturing, the distribution, and the schools. And the third institution that every HBCU uh, should have is an entrepreneurial incubator. You should be growing Black business on the HBCU campus. Your business majors should be able to access a line of credit from the HBCU to make their business dream a reality in essence what i'm saying yeah. is the hbcu needs to become more practical mm -hmm. in order to keep competitive with the pwi 100 well back to your point about about business majors like the at least my understanding is that business professors that are teaching in these colleges don't even run businesses themselves how can you teach something when you don't run it i agree i believe the longer you teach without practicing the more out of touch you come with the reality that you're professing. So I believe in scholar practitioners. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have to be. It's like if I'm going to keep teaching on Pan-Africanism, but I'm not organizing nobody. I'm not doing no work in Africa. I think we have to embrace a scholar practitioner model because when you give up on the practice, you lose your grip on its reality. Mm.
Just going back for a second, you just came from Philly today. Um, I saw some videos recently where Philly looks like uh, Skid Row in LA. Mm -hmm. It looks it looks bad. Is is that what you're seeing on the ground? It probably depends where. So like most major cities, you have the beautiful aspect, right? So Philadelphia has some very, very beautiful neighborhoods. And Philadelphia has uh, some slums as well. Uh, and to be honest with you, we have to understand that this movement of gentrification, what I call ethnic cleansing, or the racial removal of black people from the inner city and to the you know replacement of whites or, or, or non-black people. This is a government-sponsored initiative that began in the year 2000 with the selection of President George W. Bush. It was during his presidency that America decided we're going to take back the inner cities. Remember, white people ruled the inner cities until the Great Migration. And then once black people started integrating, white folks ran to the suburbs. Well, guess what? We follow them to the suburbs. So since white people are tired of trying to get a Away from black people because we absolutely love them to death and will not leave them alone they decided let's go back into the inner city and leave them out in the suburbs so we're literally living a trading places reality where they're sending us to the suburbs and they're taking back the inner cities I'm and this, yeah. in taking back the inner city they are sabotaging our ability to get back and forth to work. Many major cities, Washington, D.C. is one of them. They're going to cut off the line. They're considering cutting off the public transportation that takes you to and fro the suburb. So once black people are out there, we'll be trapped. With no hospitals, no supermarkets, none of the main institutions that you need. So I need black people to wake up and understand what's going on. But the point I wanted to make uh, uh, very clearly to the audience is... The government is intentionally turning ghettos into slums so that white developers can come in and buy these neighborhoods for pennies on a dollar. They're letting them get ran down. They want the crime to be rapid because wherever there's violence and poverty, the property value is really, really cheap. Mm -hmm. So they deliberately do not invest in black communities so white people can get them for pennies on a dollar and turn them into million dollar private gated communities.